Hello and welcome to another Stephen Mendes video. In this video we are going to develop the transition table from the logic diagram for an asynchronous circuit. So let us start with a relatively simple example. As you can see we have two inputs and one output and that little piece of wire that runs from the output back to the input of one of the gates, that feedback path actually constitutes our delay line. And as you can see, we've labeled both ends of it with Y and big Y and small Y. Big Y is the output state, small Y is the feedback. So let us see what happens next. First, we have to write the state equation. And the state equation is just the logic equation of that circuit in terms of x1 and x2. Y in terms of x1 and x2 and small y. Small y is an input. So that's simple enough. So what do we do next? Well, we are going to do essentially what we've always done. We are going to make a very specific Carnot map. Now we put the inputs, the x's on the top edge and the y's always go on the side edge or columns. So this one will be long ways because we have two x's and only one y. So after we've done that, the only thing now that we have to do to this to turn it into a transition table is we have to circle the stable states. Remember that for a state to be stable, big Y has to equal little y. And big Y is what's actually inside the squares. Those zeros and ones inside the squares are big Y. So for the top row, Big Y is going to little equal little y when the squares have in zeros. And for the bottom row, big Y is going to equal little y with the squares that have in ones. So we circle those in red and it becomes a transition table. Let's look at another circuit. Here we have a circuit where we have two outputs, y1 and y2, and one input, x. We've drawn in the feedback paths. We have two delay loops giving us y1 and little y1, and y2 and little y2. And now we have two state equations to write, one for y1 and one for y2. And as you would expect, the x appears on the right side of the equal sign, as does the y1 and y2. Now, because we have two state equations, we are going to end up with two Carnot maps. Shown here, we have a Carnot map for y, y1 and y2. And there we have plotted the ones which come from the terms in the equations, same as in digital one. Well, if it's not a one, it has to be a zero. So we fill in the zeros. And the next thing we do to create the a transition table is to combine the y1 and y2, as you can see. So the diagram looks exa exactly the same. We have y1 and y2 and x along the top edge. Remember, the inputs are always along the top and the y's are always down the side or the columns. So what you're looking at is the transition table, but the y1 and the y2 have been combined. So in each square... The number on the left is the corresponding square in the y1 table 
and the number on the right is the square from the Y2 table. So if you examine it, you will see what I mean. We've also circled once again the stable states, which is where the Y inside of the circle matches the Y1 and Y2. Basically, big Y1 and big Y2. Let's indicate that for you. Here, for example, is little y1 and little y2. Here is big y1 and big y2. So we see that the, the little y1 matches the big y1 and the little y2 matches the big y2. And of course the zero comes from the corresponding square in the y1 table and the one comes from the corresponding square in the y2 table. All right, our last example is the most complicated of all. In this example, we have two inputs, x1 and x2, and two outputs, y1 and y2. Now, our state equations are always going to have be the same number of state equations as the outputs. So, we have two state equations for the y1 and y2 as formerly. And uh, when we draw the, the two Carnot maps for y1 and y2, we end up with the same arrangement, except now we have a 16 square map because we have two inputs as well as two outputs. So we combine those two maps into one in the same way we did in the last one, putting the y1 square in front of the y2 square and we get the transition table. Once again, we circle in red where what is inside of the square matches the Y1 and Y2 in the column. So for the first one, all zero zeros would be circled. For the second one, second row, all zero ones. Third row, all one ones. And the fourth row has in no one zeros. Thanks for watching this video. And we will show you what to do with the transition table in another video. See you in the next video.